thank you very much for the welcome. Thank you, Steve, for the invitation. It's good to be down here in the southwest. It makes a change from damp Oxford. Um, yeah, well, sort southwest. of damp southwest. Um, I want to talk to you about this project that uh, a group of us are running, sponsored by the National Cybersecurity Center. Um, we're representing various universities, Bristol, UCL, uh, York, Imperial College, and I'm representing University of Oxford uh, in this venture. I guess our motivation is to um, try to find what cybersecurity is, which is um, perhaps uh, a fool's errand, I don't know. Um, what's in and what's out of scope when, you talk about, when we talk about cybersecurity? Um, many people have their idea about what you should learn or what you should know if you're a cybersecurity professional. Um, I'm, I'm standing in front of IISP's banner, I see BS, BCS's banner over there. They have some uh, esteemed and, and well-respected schemes for certification and for, for understanding what should be in qualifications. But there are lots more. There's uh, ICA, IEEE and ACM have a joint task force on cybersecurity education. Um, I'm in a European project that's developing a taxonomy of cybersecurity. Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, does it matter that we, whether we know what cybersecurity is? Well, there probably are lots of cases when it really does matter. Um, as an educationalist, I care because um, I want students to, to leave my course knowing something useful. Um, I want some, some reassurance that we're covering things that will be relevant to the, to the wider community. Uh, perhaps as an employer, you might be interested to know what people have learned or where their gaps might be in their education and to have some means of benchmarking uh, course provision, perhaps, or uh, professional development courses. Um, and um, many of us receive funding from the government, and if, if the government's going to give money to cybersecurity, they need a definition of what cybersecurity is in order to decide who to give the money to. Well, they seem, seem to think so anyway. Uh, so we draw some inspiration from... Um, some work that was done uh, a while ago by the IEEE to uh, develop a body of knowledge or a guide to the body of knowledge in software engineering. Uh, so this goes through all those things about life cycle and foundations and testing and as um, kinds of programming and, uh, and all those kinds of things. Uh, gives you a kind of a short description of the topic area, uh, a whole load of cross references to, to well known literature and the standard textbooks in software engineering. That would be Somerville, wouldn't it? Oh gosh, Somerville is the very first one listed. Uh, if you know your software engineering, that's, that's the book. Um, we want to do something similar for um, cybersecurity. So our aims here, it says, are to codify foundationally and generally recognized knowledge in cybersecurity uh, following community engagement nationally and internationally. We don't want, just want to make this up. We want this to be uh, a community consensus about what's, what's in the core of cybersecurity. It's a guide to the body of knowledge. We're not writing an encyclopedia. We're not writing a textbook. We want to give you a guide a list, if you will, of, uh, of topics and, and some flesh on the bones of those topics so that we know what, what's in the scope. And we do want to focus on an established foundation of the subject. We're not trying to summarize everything that's ever been written about security, because uh, some of it's wrong, uh, and mm, some of it's out of date, and there's too much of it anyway. Nor can we really cope with uh, talking about emerging fields. There are things that are so new that Perhaps we don't agree on the consensus of what, what the topic extent is in some of the new areas anyway. So we'll, we'll, we'll put those on the shelf. We'll probably mention them, but not include them in the main scope. So we're looking, or we've promised now, to develop a document that covers around about 20 knowledge areas, around 20 pages of description for each knowledge area, all beautifully cross-referenced, referenced to key textbooks, and um, it, where necessary, documenting dependencies on other knowledge. You couldn't possibly know about the security of uh, computer operating systems unless you know about computer operating systems. Uh, and so there are clear dependencies. You couldn't possibly understand the details of cryptography without knowing some number theory. We're not going to codify the number theory or the operating systems, but we believe other people have already done that piece of work. We want to codify the bit that's actually in cybersecurity. Why would one want to do that? Well, a big part of the motivation, I think, does have to do with courses. I talked about some other motivations before. 
uh, but this kind of work in, in, in helping us to define learning pathways all the way through from, from, from the middle part of school right through maybe to master's level education um, already happens in maths and physics and chemistry and bi in, in um, mature subjects. Uh, and it's cybersecurity is starting to mature. I'm not sure if we could argue it's very secure, well, very um, mature yet. But uh, it seems time to try and do the same kind of thing for a cybersecurity discipline to identify those knowledge dependencies and, and learning pathways that people might follow as they go through an educational program in, in cybersecurity. Help people design courses at all those levels. Help other people evaluate whether they're good, bad, or indifferent courses, whether their coverage is, uh, is suitable for the purpose that perhaps they're being sold for or, 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 um, or planned for. And uh, equally well, uh, NCSC and, and no doubt other people are interested in accrediting um, courses. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, you have to ask well, what the course covers and whether the course coverage meets some norm of what you'd expect. Where's the norm defined? Well, the aim is to have a body of knowledge that defines that norm for us. So the principles behind what we're, uh, what we're how we're approaching this task uh, are that we should be international in this. Um, cybersecurity clearly doesn't stop at, at the English Channel, um, even after Brexit, perhaps. Uh, there is a, there's a, it's necessarily something that needs to, needs to embrace uh, the world's academic community, uh, well, the world's cybersecurity practitioner community uh, in, in understanding this field. Uh, we're aiming that it should be for the community and by the community. We're not looking to hand down something uh, from five super eminent academics with, with no input from anyone else. Uh, even, even from our esteemed universities, we don't quite have that position. Um, Cybersecurity is owned by all of you, just as much as it's owned by me. Uh, and so together, uh, we, the community, need to build this body of knowledge. Um, the, the sponsor is keen that this work should be open and freely accessible. Of course, many people have developed curricula and bodies of knowledge and other, other standards documents, but they cost money and there are, there are intellectual property rights around whether you can use them and whether you can reproduce them and whether you can share them. Um, a feature of this body of knowledge will be that it's, uh, it's available for everyone. And we want our processes to be transparent so that you can have confidence that we have really done the community engagement and you can believe that um, we think we've covered the ground um, justly and, and fairly. To achieve that, that, that level of accountability and transparency, uh, the project is in the hands of Project Management Board, those of us whose names were on the, were on the front cover. Uh, we're given our tasks by our sponsor, the National Cybersecurity Centre, who, who keep an eye on us. Uh, we receive advice from two groups of advisors, a professional advisory board, I'll give you some names in a moment, and some international academic advisors drawn from universities around the world. And it's our job as a project management board to scope this document, uh, work out what the topic should be, recruit authors for the topics, and um, make sure that there's a good review process. And I'll, I want to talk about a few of those, uh, mainly in the spirit of that transparency, uh, in the next few minutes. Uh, we've recruited some academic advisors from a number of leading universities in this in this area uh, or leading individuals um, I won't l I won't read out all the names to you, but 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 uh, if you're in this sector You'll recognize some of those university names probably And then we've got a professional advisory board uh, Which tries to draw from some of the learned societies um, we've got IET representative there and a BCS representative um, oh, and an IISP representative, that's good. Phew. Um, as well as uh, representatives of a few, few companies, we've got Ben Laurie from Google and Claire Vishik from Intel. Dave King is the CISO at Legal and General. Um, Andrew Rose is the, I think he's the CISO at NATS, the National Air Traffic Services. Um, and Sir Edmund Burton um, keeps, keeps the professional advisory board in line and does a very good job of, uh, as chair. Um, so the, the aim is to share every element of our process with these people 
our, our ideas about how content are developing, our choices of authors, and get their feedback. Uh, they can tell us where the pitfalls are, as well as the things that we've forgotten to look out for. Perhaps those are pitfalls. Um, our general approach is to uh, develop this cyborg through, uh, through something approximating an agile approach. I'm not sure it's turned out to be quite like agile development, but that, that, that was my original suggestion. Um, so that um, we've always got a working cyborg, a working body of knowledge. Uh, we'll augment it in each iteration by adding deep work on, on distinct knowledge areas as we go through. Uh, and, and build up some of our backlog in, in Agile terms as we go. Um, in particular, the project's been divided into two phases. We spent um, the middle, or well, most of last year, developing the scope of this document, uh, and now we've recently entered on scape phase two, and uh, we're um, working out the details of these knowledge descriptions, uh, and also looking at the knowledge dependencies. I'll come back to that in a moment. So the project began uh, in February last year, and it's going to run till April next year. In that scoping phase, we're back to the question of how do I know what cybersecurity is? Uh, and our approach was to do a whole range of different activities. We had an online survey. We, had, um, we collected together a number of bodies of knowledge, a number of textbooks, a number of course descriptions, anything we could find that was, was textual and subject to some text analysis. Uh, we identified some key experts in a number of different areas across what we thought would be the broad scope of the knowledge areas, and we did some detailed interviews with them. We ran a whole load of community workshops uh, across the country uh, with both academics and business people and a few government people in the room. Uh, we invited people to, to write their own description of what they thought should be the scope of the CYBOC, and we received 13 of those. Uh, and we ran uh, one or two events at international conferences as well. As you can see, um, we've got a lot of act academic uh, input in most of those activities, but quite a good amount of practitioner input as well, and we're, we're fairly pleased uh, with that balance, I think. In the workshops, certainly we pulled together, uh, as I say, a peop range of people from, a, from across business and, and academia. And uh, one of the uh, researchers we employed on the project is very into um, sort of creative facilitation. And so each workshop had one of these big posters. I think it was the size of, of, of these posters here, uh, where, where people were invited to think about the, the Cybok supermarket. And... Um, which things would they want to put in the trolley? And, 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 and these are, this, is, this should be in my cyborg. Which things are on their heart they think are terribly important? Uh, which things should stay on the shelf? They're, sort of, they're relevant, but not today. And which things are completely out of scope and they should be in the bin? Um, oh, 15 items or less is, is the mantra for the supermarket because we don't want people's lists to be endless. Um, and in, in good... Uh, round table uh, facilitation workshop style, uh, lots of post-it notes are involved. You can see one of those posters here covered in, covered in notes, lots of coffee consumed as well. That, that, that seems to be the way to do this. How do you analyze that data once you've got it? Well, um, one piece of work that one of my colleagues on, on the panel did was to take people's ideas of what is related to what Actually, I can't remember the algorithm, but still. You distill lots of people's ideas about what are the big topics and what are the small topics that are related to the big topics, and uh, you draw a graph of, of the distillation of those ideas. And so lots and lots of people thought that cryptography was a big topic, and so, so it comes out as a, as, a, as a red text there with lots of links to it. And similarly, lots of people thought that human factors was a big topic. Um, and some of the other big ones, you can see risk management, law regulation, architecture, networks, uh, and then some sort of medium level topics like governance and privacy and attacks and incident management and forensics. Software, gosh, I don't know. Uh, there's rather a lot of information on that side though, and even if you were up close, you probably couldn't read the, the orange text very well, because I can't. Um, if we cut down uh, the, the thresholding in the algorithm, say we'll only, we'll only look at the strongest links that people have defined, um, 
the, the graph simplifies rather. And um, we've still got most of the same top level topics. And one of my colleagues pointed out that there's a kind of, um, we didn't put this in, this is just what emerged from the graph. There's a kind of historical development here. Thinking about security began pretty much with cryptography. And then people started thinking about software design and development. And then it really became a risk management topic. And then more recently, uh, we realized that risk management devolves to quite a large extent to law and regulation, but also to understanding human factors and then some of these other issues as well. So it's intriguing that by asking people what they think are related as topics, they give you the historical development of cybersecurity. Perhaps there's some deep psychology in there, but I'm, I'm not a psychologist, so we won't go there. We got other input from our advisory boards and international meetings of all sorts, engaging with this joint task force on cybersecurity education in the States, because that's uh, rather important too. And um, those graphs gives you a hint of what our knowledge areas turned out to be. But um, now the big reveal is what's actually our 19 knowledge areas for the, for the body of knowledge that we're writing. And uh, they, they come in the shape of this picture here. Gosh. Um, it's very hard to work out how to navigate these because essentially we've got 19 related but unrelated topics. Um, so this, this Venn diagram isn't, if it's a Venn diagram, I suppose it technically is a Venn diagram, isn't the last word on this subject, but it's just one way to visualize how some of our topics are related to each other. So we've got a group of topics that are related to infrastructure, a group of topics that are related to systems, uh, <clears throat> a group of topics that are related to software. And then we've got the much the softer ones, if you like, that are related to humans and organizational and regulatory aspects. And uh, then the sort of um, the what really goes wrong aspect, attacks and defenses, malware, adversaries, forensics, and um, security operations. And I could bore you with, with, with short descriptions of all of those, if you like, uh, but, but, but perhaps it's just, it's just good to revisit those for a second. Um, one of the big questions, of course, is the, these are all important topics, but are they all the same kind of topic? Are they all top-level topics? Or should, should, I don't know, doctrine be a top-level topic? Or should... Um, <sighs> Security controls be a top-level topic. If, you, if, if your life is ISO 27001, you think in, in security controls, should that be your topic? This is our distilled wisdom of what seems to be the way that the topics fall out. So we've got risk management, law and regulation, and human factors. We've got malware. We've got the way that adversaries behave. So... The fact that they use malware is a feature, but it, it, it's, it's distinct from the fact that the adversaries might be using malware um, through, through security operations and incident management. Our professional advisors are inclined to think that that should be two topics, not one, but we're holding out at the moment, and it's, it's one topic, but I can see that changing in the future myself. Um, we've got forensics, we've got privacy and online rights. That's an odd one. That's slightly off on its own compared to the others, but Privacy is clearly hugely important, and I don't need to mention the four-letter acronym either, but it drives a lot of what's happening in this space. I come from a much more systems uh, background in, in computer science, and so uh, I'm particularly interested in these system security topics. Uh, it's operating systems or distributed systems, everything around AAA, authentication, author authorization, and accountability. Um, because that's, that's a weird one, because it mixes certain technologies that you might think of in systems with a whole lot of operational stuff about how you write your access control policy and how you enforce it and how you update it when people leave the organization and all those things. And then cryptography, which some people still think is the middle of security, and I'm happy that we've got it off on a corner somewhere, because I think it's, it's, it's terribly important. It might even be foundational, but it's certainly not in the middle. Um, we've got infrastructure, networks, hardware security, cyber physical systems. That's, that's a bit of an emerging topic, isn't it? But there's, there's plenty of it there already to get your teeth into, as, as, as we've already heard. Um, 
And some, some things that are perhaps a little bit esoteric, but big security issues in their own right, are security at the physical layer. What, what can you do with radio level interference? How, much, uh, how many emissions do you leak out of the door by, by choice, bad choice of cables? And all those really weird things that are hard to control, the layer below attacks, if you will, if you remember your security textbook. Um, and finally, um, a whole load of things about how software is designed and, and developed. So, um, a, top, a, a topic that's very much around good and bad practices in, in coding, as distinct from a topic that's much more about the so software engineering approach. How do you build a secure life cycle for developing your software? And then just because the web is such a large part of the, it's, 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 in a sense, it's a subset of software security, but it, it, web and mobile applications are such a big topic in their own right for, for cybersecurity that they perhaps deserve a, a heading of their own. So that's, um, that's our scoping document. Um, you can download it from our website and you can read a paragraph of, at the moment, it's a paragraph on each of those topics. Uh, and you can see the picture there. Having entered phase two, our goal is to take each of those topics in turn and recruit a specialist author to write uh, the detail, the 20 pages that describes that topic in moderate detail and gives you all the references to all the good uh, textbooks on the subject and other places, you could, or perhaps the leading seminal academic papers uh, where those are the thing you need to read. So we're recruiting authors to do that. We're also recruiting specialist reviewers to keep the authors honest and to, to give them feedback on what they're doing. Um, <coughs> the authors are going to be mostly academics, just because academics like the sound of their own voice, and they've got time to write, and they're usually quite good at writing, which are, are all good things. Uh, whereas the reviewers will be a mix of academics and industrialists, so that we hopefully get a rounded picture from the community. Um, and then actually the next picture gives you a better picture of what that, what's going on there. Uh, I don't want to give you a detailed flow chart, but just to give you the sense, the author is going to do the work. They're going to work with this small panel of review reviewers to improve their document a few times. And then eventually, not ev after a month or two, uh, we'll have a draft that's ready for public release. Our advisors will take a look and then... Um, the world can take a look. It'll be on our website. Uh, we'll, we'll run workshops where relevant with, with, with like-minded groups of people. Um, we'll engage with the community, but anyone who wants to can read it on the website and tell us what's wrong with it or how to improve it. We prefer the how to improve it comments because they're easier to deal with. Um, and then the author will have to do a bit more work to address the comments, uh, and then we'll publish that, that knowledge area and uh, in our Agile model, as we, as we go along, as we complete each sprint, more and more of our Cyborg will be there. It'll, the, the knowledge errors will turn, in, turn from individual paragraphs into 20-page chapters. But what are we going to do with it once it's written? And that's the thing that we're just starting to think about, and I'm really... Well, I, I'm in the frame, actually, to start collecting our ideas and feedback on how we, how we make progress with this. We want to develop knowledge dependencies. Those topics are all related to each other, and the more you stare at it, the more you can draw lines between the various different things. Malware depends on programming in various ways, but it also links to the adversarial behavior bit. The cryptography links to networking, of course. It, in smaller ways, it also links to operating systems and virtualization and whether your disk management is, uh, uh, involves encryption. There are, there are many, many linkages across those topics. How do we work out? How do we, how do we capture all those knowledge dependencies? And also then, how do we think about the learning pathways? If you're, at, uh, if you're 12 years old at school, you don't need to know all that's in the document. Uh, do you need to know a little bit of every one of the knowledge areas, or are some of them just specialists that you'll only ever get to at master's level? Um, where, is, where is the core of this knowledge? And how does it differ when you're 12, or when you're 16, or when you're 21, or whether, when, when you're a, a professional of, of 20 years standing? Um, we're not going to solve that for the entire world and the entire community, but we want at least to have some thoughts about what some of those learning pathways are so that other people can develop and fill in uh, bits that suit their, their corner of the community, as it will. 
So we're going to uh, employ someone to do that work. We'll run more workshops to, um, to try and capture people's sense of what should be in uh, knowledge at a particular uh, level of, of, of development, what, what a learning pathway should look like. And uh, given that the National Cybersecurity has started uh, certifying some degree programs, uh, that process seems like a good one, a good place to prototype some of these learning pathway ideas and say, well, what if the certification was against Cyboc instead of against the, 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 the framework that's used at the moment? There'll be some other supporting material in the document. There'll be a general introduction. There'll be lots of glossaries and acronym lists and all those wonderful things that you get in a reference document uh, that you can read if you really can't sleep at night. Um, as well as references to other bodies of knowledge and key textbooks. Um, maybe diagrams and mappings of cross-cutting themes. We're not quite sure how much of this we need to capture. I think that's going to emerge as we've got more of these knowledge areas written. But certainly our aim is very much that there is public review of these things. We want to distribute knowledge of, uh, knowledge of the knowledge areas. We want to distribute <laughs> information about the knowledge areas far and wide and uh, run some consultation workshops, get feedback, and um, ensure that this is a consensus view. And then publish the stable knowledge areas uh, when they're stable. We'll go to lots of events to talk about that, and that's why I'm here today, and thank you for the introduction, the uh, invitation. Um, I'm also going to New Orleans, which is not nearly as nice as Plymouth, I'm sure. In June, I think it probably won't be very nice. <laughs> it strikes me there are a number of clear challenges here. This is a vast topic, and everyone you talk to about what cybersecurity is has their own point of view. And so working out how to get av adequate coverage of the topic is going to be a challenge. It's a guide, not an encyclopedia. Uh, it's about the core knowledge, not the esoteric and the tentative stuff. But even so, that's quite hard. I think a related challenge is going to be having an adequate balance. If there are 10 subheadings in cryptography and 12 in networking, and somebody's learned three of the headings in cryptography and seven of the knowledge ones in networking, who's better off? Uh, wh wh who's the better educated? Which is the, which is the more important topic? So I think we've got to get those, those subheadings and the, and the extent of each chapter broadly right so that, people, so that when people do play topic bingo, when they say, well, my degree covers seven headings and your degree only covers three, it means something. I don't particularly want it to mean something, but I think it's inevitable it's going to have to mean something. So there's going to have to be some balance in this. And I think one of the biggest challenges, of course, is maintenance. I think some of the knowledge areas may even be out of date before we finish the project. They'll certainly be out of date within a year of finishing the project. So our sponsor has it in mind to hand over this document to a, a professional body to be maintained, and that will, that will require a process of its own, and it will require um, ongoing support and ongoing community engagement, cause it, it, uh, and, and that's, I think that's been the experience of the IEEE SWEBOC as well that I started with. So the takeaways from all of this are um, we're developing a guide to the body of knowledge in cybersecurity. We've identified 20 knowledge areas and we're looking to, do, to, to write about 20 pages of knowledge. 20 pages of knowledge, gosh, uh, about each of those. Um, it's going to be detailed, but it's not going to be an encyclopedia. It needs to complement other efforts, other work on curricula, other um, professional bodies and their uh, skills frameworks uh, uh, and related work. Um, it's got to be by the community, for the community, otherwise it will be useless, I think. So it needs to be open, reviewed, and freely circulated, and, and we've got a process in place to do that. It's definitely a work in progress right now, and um, we look forward to community engagement in making it better. <laughs>